Does anybody even know I'm here? Is there any meaning? Did God create all this? Or did we just invent God? How you doing? You know what? You didn't really invent God. No. Kind of absurd if you really think about it. God actually invented you and everything else for that matter. Everything, the whole enchilada. He created the light and the dark and the skies and the seas, the land and the plants and the birds and the trees. Yeah, it's Mike. The sun and the stars and the clouds and the moon, the fish, the squid, the spotted loon. I don't even think there is a spotted loon, No, right? don't stop me now, Gabe. I'm on a roll. There's <sighs> birds with wings and bugs that sings. It sings. And cows and bears Singular, and beavers and possums. And corn and squash and sunflower blossoms. I'm very sorry. But of course I believe in science. I mean, science is how we cured polio and invented cell phones. See, she thinks that believing in God and creation means that you have to reject science. Wendy, God loves science. He tells people in his word to study creation. He wants us to know how he built everything. Yeah, everything from neutrinos to eagles to the Milky Way. God made it all, you know. The hadrons, the photons, the protons, no, the neutrons. No, I, I'm not sure she likes science, Mike. I'm not sure she's listening, Gabe. Life is probably just a big accident. A predictable result of an infinite number of matter-antimatter asymmetric collisions. No, she's listening, Mike. Just not to you. Problem is, she can't stop listening to the voices of her culture. Pay attention, Wendy. This is the most important concept in modern biology. It's called evolution. 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 This is the most, most important, important concept in modern biology. It's called evolution. Natural processes were simply in place. Natural processes were simply in place. Evolution. There was no God who had anything to do with that. All evolution. It's how all things came to be. What if I don't believe your idea? Well, then you're in violation of the Constitution of the United States and the separation of church and state! This, folks, is one of the great tragedies of your time. You folks are living in an age when God's word is being ignored and fallible ideas are being held up as unquestioned truth. A truth that leads to despair. People like Wendy are being taught that life is just an accident. The result of billions of years of chemical collisions. Just think how it could change her life if Wendy found out that there really is purpose and meaning to her existence. So, we've prepared a little multimedia presentation to go over a few key points. Oh, yeah. My man Mike here is going to run things from the back. I'm gone. Okay, people, it's showtime. All right, Mike. Lights! Camera! Action! And God said, let there be light! Very nice! Let the water separate with a big space in between. Let there be dry land and vegetation. In day three, and it's like, show me the dry land. And before you know it, you, you got spinach and palm trees and daffodils and mushrooms. Let there be a sun, moon, and star. It's like one, a sun. You know, solar power right there. Th th then you got the moon and then the stars. Now you can start measuring things like months and years and seasons, et cetera, et cetera. Let there be creatures in the sea. And then hanging out in the deep of the sea, you got the fish and all the other cool sea creatures that we can't even imagine. And let there be flying creatures of every kind. And above the water, of course, you got birds, bats, pterodactyls, all your basic flying creatures. Oh, that is... Let there be land animals, each according to their kind. 
Animals against you. Animals. Very large. Very small animals. Cue the bugs, Mike. But each according to their kind. Very important concept, as it turns out. Each according to their kind. And let us make man in our own image, male and female. The first people, oh, Adam and Eve. Great couple, really. Oh, very attractive. But then God looks over all of this and says, That is good. <laughs> Everything was good. The animals didn't die. The people didn't die. There was no disease, no destruction, no genetic mutation. Man was without sin and could walk right there with God. Until the rebellion. Adam and Eve listened to the serpent, and they ate from the one tree they were told not to eat from. They ignored God's direct command, and everything changed. The perfect world began to suffer. Everything that's gone wrong with the world started right there. And so it began. Humanity's legacy of hate, anger, murder, and deception. Adam and Eve's kids rebelled against God, and so did their kids, and their kids right on down the line. People forgot all about God, lived however they wanted to live. And the world became full of corruption, violence, and pride. It was not how God had created it to be. And ultimately, God determined to destroy it with a worldwide massive catastrophe. Get it, Brandon! On the 17th day of the second month, all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens opened, and rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. The earth's crust was ripped apart, and everything that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Many of them buried in underwater waves of sediment and visible today. And fuck, to stand for something. Yes, 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 Wendy. It's in the Bible. It's, it's all in the Bible. When you start to look at the world through the perspectives the Bible gives, then all kinds of things start to make sense. Like marine fossils found atop mountain ranges. Those mountains were once covered in water. Yes, or volcanic dust found in the ice cores. Just think of all that volcanic ash in the atmosphere after the flood. <laughs> <laughs> or, or how about the similarities in DNA found in the cells of every living thing? Since God created DNA, he made it so that all living things can live and eat in the same world. Cool, huh? If you use the Bible as your starting point, Wendy, then everything makes sense. Mm -hmm. But if you buy into this molecules demand evolution... Goo to you, we like to say. What? Yeah, this uh, goo to you idea of evolution, then no matter what you see in the real world, you have to interpret the data through one basic foundational yep. lens. Billions of years. That's right, your faith is in billions of years. Whether it makes any sense or not. Because evolution makes absolutely no sense without billions of years. We've now conclusively determined the age of zircon grains found in Australian sandstone. It's somewhere between 4.1 and 4.2 billion years old. Wow, that is certainly just amazing. That's really, um, old. So they've proved the Earth is billions of years old. Oh, come on! Yeah, that's not proof, Wendy. Radioisotope dating is not proof. That, that, that's a dating method based on a ton of assumptions. It, 
new studies are suggesting radically younger ages for those rocks. <laughs> and there really can be no questioning of Charles Darwin anymore. I mean, virtually every thinking person on the planet agrees wholeheartedly with virtually everything he ever said. Well, yes, that certainly is true, isn't it? Darwin really cracked the code. And they've proven that we evolved from simple, single-celled organisms. No, they haven't proven any such thing. And single-celled organisms aren't actually simple at all. So, Dean Kenyon, late 60s, San Francisco State, I believe, has proven how under just the right circumstances, the primordial soup turns to life, essentially proving wow, that... Wow, right. The beginning of life, just like that. It's just amazing. And they've proven that single-celled organisms came from chemicals. No! The, the, the guy who wrote the book on that chemical evolution, uh, Kenyon, completely changed his mind. <laughs> Said it could have never happened that way. But unfortunately, knowledge itself is attacked when those creationists try to get into our schools and question Darwin's conclusions. Isn't it just unbelievable? I mean, where would we be without knowledge? Sometimes I guess if you question evolution, then you must be an idiot. Idiotic is not the question. You see this rock? Evolutionists will tell you they can see millions and billions of years into the past by doing radioisotope dating. But they're making a ton of assumptions when they do that. Scientists look at this radioisotope decay rate and conclude that the Earth must be four billion years old. But there are a lot of clues that don't support that idea at all. And what clues are those, Gay? Helium, for example. Helium? Yes. Some rocks have zircon crystals in them. Now, scientists have found helium in those zircons. Now, those things were thought to be more than one billion years old, and they found helium! <laughs> you know what that means? That the rocks were not that old, Gabe. No, it means that the rocks were not that old. That's what you said. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. The speed that the helium is leaking out of those zircons today suggests that the zircons and the rocks may be only thousands of years old. Only thousands of years old? Now you're getting all radical on me now, Gabe. But it's not all, Mike. How about rocks of known ages? Like the rocks that were formed in the Mount St. Helens volcano, for example. Now, we know how old those rocks are. But labs doing radioisotope dating on them are, are dating them from 300,000 to tens of millions of years old. I knew this, folks, already. Uh, so, I'm starting to wonder here, Gabe, could it possibly be that, due to the evolutionists' assumptions about the past, that all those dating methods supporting the millions and billions of years might be... Could be. Shall we say... Wrong. wrong? That's the word. Of course, there is one place that you must never, ever bring up any of these observations, any of this science, any of these questions. And where's that, Gabe? School. Here is a place called Specimen Ridge. It's at Yellowstone, and it's one of the best evidences we can find that prove the ancient age of the Earth. Very stimulating. You can see how the many different forests laid down successively on the same place over long periods of time show how it must have taken millions and millions uh, sir, of years. Sir, ab about that, um, I was just wondering if it really had to be like you said, you know, like millions of years. Of course, the Earth and the universe are billions of years old. <laughs> so, uh, how do you explain salt in the ocean? Salt in the ocean? There should be a lot more. <laughs> See, every year, more salt is going into the ocean than is leaving it, so the ocean gets a tiny bit more salty each year. What does this prove? Well, if the Earth were as old as you say, we, <laughs> we could practically walk across the Atlantic because yeah, after billions of years of adding salt, it would by now be <laughs> solid salt. Well, talk all you want about salt, but geologists know that the rocks of the Earth are billions of years old. Whoa, not all geologists. Uh, did you know that a number of PhD geologists are reconsidering how old the Earth might be? There's a lot of observational evidence out there that has convinced them that the Earth might, in fact, be quite young. Well, I'd say forget about those geologists, then. They must not be serious. Not serious because they don't agree with you? Uh, so what about 
dinosaurs. Uh, exactly. Everyone knows that the age of the dinosaur ended over 65 million years ago. Whoa, 65 million years ago? That was the last time any dinosaur walked on the Earth? 65 million years at least. They must have been wiped out by a comet or an ice age or something. Uh, OK, well, here's an interesting picture. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Dude, that's a cross-section of a Tyrannosaurus rex leg bone found by paleontologists in Montana in the summer of 2005. Cool. <laughs> awesome. I mean, look at all that gnarly red stuff. Yeah, blood vessels, red blood cells even, soft tissue. Now, okay, how could it be that after 65 million years, all the stuff hasn't, you know, decayed away? Well, well I, I, get, I, I suppose uh, that just shows that in certain situations, things might not decay or fossilize as rapidly as we once did. Well, you know, all this would make a lot more sense if you would consider that dinosaurs might have lived only a few thousand years ago, and many of them were buried suddenly in a worldwide flood, you know, like the Bible says. Well, that, that, that can't be. Uh, the, the fossil record reveals millions and Maybe millions. Maybe the Earth's not as old as you think it is, either. Did you know that the Earth's magnetic field is decaying so rapidly that life would have been impossible just a million years ago? I think I know that. And did you know that there are no widely expanded supernova in the galaxy? Exactly what we'd expect to find if the universe had only existed, say, a few thousand years. Well, I, I just think Charles Darwin was a great man. Charles Darwin? Dude, I was talking about supernova. Uh, but, but Darwin is the one who gave us the wonderful concept of evolution. It said he saw the finches with different sized beaks. Okay. Darwin's book popularized the idea of evolution because he came up with an explanation as to why changes were occurring. He called it natural selection. Yeah, but truth is, God made all animals with an ability to change to the world they live in. God coded into every living thing so much variety and option that, that animals could move in all kinds of fascinating directions, farther and faster than Darwin could have ever predicted. Well, we all know how we evolved from those ape-like creatures. It's a very famous picture. It's, it's a drawing. It's one artist's interpretation. That's not the same thing as fact. Are you saying this famous drawing is a hoax? I'm saying people see what they want to see. Evolutionists like you come to the evidence with an existing set of beliefs. So naturally, you interpret all data within the context of billions of years. Well, I was taught that <clears throat> science cannot allow a divine foot in the door. Therefore, anything that has no natural explanation can certainly therefore have no supernatural explanation. But, but, but why? Well, scientists have discovered all sorts of wonderful things over the years without a supernatural explanation. But what if that supernatural explanation is the true one? Well, we wouldn't know that it was the true one because we'd automatically assume that it wasn't. There, there is, is no God, God who intervenes in the world! You see, Wendy, atheistic evolutionists can't see the hand of God because they already believe there is no God. That's a huge act of faith on their part. But look for yourself. Look carefully. God is clearly evident, just as clearly as you can assume that there's a designer for that chair you're sitting in. Right. And obviously your chair isn't just random pieces of wood that accidentally fell into place and glued themselves together. Life, even in its simplest form, is way more complex than that. Doesn't it make sense that there should be a designer for life? A designer who is obviously very intelligent. But God is way more than that. He didn't just create the universe. He entered it, and he cares for it, and he sustains it, and he loves it. That's what we've been trying to tell you, Wendy. I mean, God not only made all of this, but he made you, he cares for you, and gives you freedom and purpose and life. That is the answer to the questions you've been asking, Wendy. There is a God in... You are way more than just his creation. He wants you to know him in a personal way. His word can be trusted when it talks about his creation and when it talks about your salvation. You matter to him, and you were designed for eternity. 
What more could there be? Evolution or creation? I don't know. I guess there could be a god. But I don't want people to think I'm stupid. For the invisible things of God, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that men are without excuse. Hey, folks, life isn't meaningless. The universe isn't random, and the future isn't void because you have hope through Jesus Christ. If people dismiss the record of Genesis and God's act of creation, then they can pretend God doesn't exist. You know, God never existed. No, he exists, trust us, but who's going to listen to a couple of angels? <laughs> well, it'd be better if people listen to God's word. God hadn't sent Mike or me down to talk to humans in a long, long time. But he's talking through his word all the time. People can't hear us, but they can hear you. They might actually listen to you. It's up to you to study God's word. Learn as much as you can. Now, some of you should be teaching this truth. Some of you should start listening. The answers are available if you really want them. Okay. Ready? Yep. We're out of here. See ya.